On this lonely stretch of highway between Socorro and Sholo, near the Continental Divide, you can pass right through Pie Town if you're not paying attention. In honor of Pie Day, we've decided to take a special trip down to Pie Town to find out if the town lives up to the name. Clyde Norman, who was a World War I vet, is credited in giving the town its name when he settled in this area in 1922. His attempt at mining failed, so he opened up a store selling gasoline and groceries and apple pies that became quite popular. In 1923, someone by the name of Harmon Craig bought Norman out. Really, he brought more business to the town by opening up a larger general store, a garage, a cafe, a three-room hotel, and a bean warehouse. His family continued to make pies for the hungry travelers coming through this area. Through the rest of the 1920s and 30s, Pie Town continued to grow to about 250 families. There was an influx of people coming from Texas and Oklahoma trying to escape the Dust Bowl. In the 1940s, an employee of the U.S. Department of Agriculture named Russell Lee came out to Pie Town out of curiosity and took photographs of daily life in the area. His photographs captured the struggles and resilience of the community during the Great Depression, and it provided a glimpse into rural life in America at that time. Little did anyone know how famous these photographs would later become. Many people left this area in the 50s when the weather patterns became drier, agriculture was no longer successful. I had heard of Pie Town for many years and had never quite made it to this area. Well, this year we made a special trip down to find out what Pie Town was all about. When you see this farm of windmills, you'll know you're very close. Welcome to Pie Town USA. We're stopping in at Pioneer restaurant here is our first stop looking for some pies. Well, it turns out that old Pioneer Pies was out of pie today. <clears throat> they had a big crowd, it's a Saturday afternoon, and they had a big crowd in the morning that wiped them out, and so they only had a couple of flavors left. And we tried the blueberry lemon, and it was actually really good. Our next stop is the Ohana Family Cafe. Here at the Ohana Cafe, you can stick a pin in the map and show where you're from and you can sign the wall. They told us they get a lot of through hikers down the Continental Divide. So this is like a light sweet cream cheese pie with pineapples and coconut all throughout. It's so good. The Ohana pie. friendliest people here at the Ohana Cafe and the wife is actually from Hawaii and so she specializes in the, that Ohana pie. 
a little cream cheese, pineapple inside, a little coconut shavings. It's quite delicious. They told us that Pie Town was started in the 1920s by somebody that lived out here that started making fried apple pies for the cowboys in the area. So I'll have to look up a little bit of history about Pie Town and the name has stuck ever since. And then around the COVID time, uh, some of the restaurants here that were real famous for pies really struggled because uh, the state you know, shut all the restaurants down for um, a significant period of time. But we've still got a couple remaining, so we're stopping at all the places and trying all the pies. If you want to visit all three restaurants in Pie Town, then you better plan on coming on a Saturday. All these restaurants work together on their schedule to be sure that at least one of them's open when you pass through the area. Behind the sign, there we go. Doze and Bucks Coffee and Cafe. Joe's and Bucks has the largest menu options here in town. They're open from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. And so they have breakfast, lunch, and dinner with a pretty large menu and a very large selection of drinks. The owners here at Doze and Bucks are very creative and they have many arts and crafts items for sale right there in their store. They were kind enough to take a meal for one and split it into two plates. I wanted to taste it, but I wasn't hungry enough for a full meal. It was very kind. The big beans they have here are some of the best I've ever had. And the pork ribs are delicious. And the uh, barbecue sauce is really good too. There's two different kinds. It's during my time here that I first learned about a New Mexico apple pie. Now at first we thought these were just apples from New Mexico, but it turns out these are apple pies with green chili. You must give it a taste. All these restaurants are locally owned. They're so nice. They'll come and talk to you when you're eating at their restaurant. It makes for a great afternoon.